everyone, and welcome to my updated video on how to insert maps you made in PDSMS into your ROM, where I'll now be showing how to do so with VSPRE Reloaded, which is the current name of the famous Nomura tool I was mentioning in the past. Now just to be clear again, DSPRE is strictly a Gen 4 tool, so if you'd like to learn about Gen 5 map editing, come to our Discord from the link in the description to learn about importing Gen 5 maps made with PDSMS, and we can show you about using the new tools called Swiss Army Knife and CRT Map. But okay, the goal of this updated video is the same as the original video, where I am starting this video right where episode 1 left off, where you have exported your map files and are ready to import them into your ROM. I am then going to show the steps to clear out the original map's buildings, NPCs, and scripts so that your new map is clean and ready to use. Next, I'm going to insert a second map and demonstrate how to connect it to my first map so I can walk between them. And then lastly, I will show how to edit the ROM so that you can spawn on your custom map once the intro ends, after picking your character, name, and all that. This will allow you to immediately access your custom map if you wish, and have it act as the start of your own region. So, you can see that we are going to be going over a lot today. Therefore, I also want to remind you that all the map files you will see me use today are included in the zip folder you can download from the description, in case you want to follow along with your own Platinum ROM. But alright, I am excited to start showing you these new steps, so let's get into it. So first, I'm going to open DSPRE. Like so, well, I'll use the open ROM button to go to where my ROM is stored on the desktop. And I can pick my fresh platinum ROM. Now before we can dig into everything here, there is one important detail I need to mention. The moment I opened my ROM in DSPRE, this folder appeared on my desktop. This content folder is essentially a dump of the edible data of my ROM, like an extracted copy. When I make edits in DSPRE, I'm actually making changes to the files in this folder and not to the original ROM. So basically, this folder is what saves the changes that I will make. So the warning that I want to give is you want to be sure not to accidentally delete this folder, or you will lose all of your progress and have to start over. And to that end, if I was to close DSPRE, and reopen it where I pick my ROM again this tool now detects the extracted data folder we're saying yes here will open DSPRE where I last left it off but if you say no then it will delete your contents folder and start you over fresh so you want to be sure never to say no unless you actually want to start over and now I have my ROM open again, and I can now begin phase one of importing my custom map from episode one. So first, I have to locate the map I want to replace. In DSPRE, you can search out the location here and then jump to the location that I want. So I can come here, so I can type in Twin Leaf, and T01 here is Twin Leaf Town. So what I want to do next is click the open matrix button and now I am here now this may not be immediately clear as to what we're looking at here just kind of like a scary wall of squares however if this pick list is set to zero up here then what this is showing is the overworld of the ROM which might make some more sense if I overlay the town map of the game like this with the power of editing so okay now that I know that, I know that Twin Leaf Town should be somewhere down here. And actually, you can see that this square here is already highlighted blue. That was done as part of clicking the Open Matrix button, because DSPRE is that powerful. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> so it already picked the one I want for me. Now, right now we're on the Map Headers tab, so if I double click this, I'll just go back to where I was here. So I need to change to the map files sub tab, and then I can double click that same square that was in the same spot, and that will jump me to the map that I want to replace. Or as you can see, DSPRE is insanely interconnected. It is really meant to make ROM editing as visual as possible. 
It is so much easier than SDSME and PPRE. But alright, so now I am where I want to be. And this is where the files you export from PDSMS come into play. So like I said, I'm going to be inserting two maps during this video. For this first one, I'm going to use the files from episode one to show the individual method. And then later for the second map, I will then use the bin file I made in episode 1.5 that makes this much easier. It's just going to be important for you to know both methods. I don't have any buildings to add here yet. That's for episode three. So I'll start with the move permissions tab where I will click to import permissions. And I'll go into my map examples folder. And since I'm showing the older method from episode one, I will use the files I made in that episode here. And this filters us down so I just see the permission folder in here, which is very kind of them. So I can double click and successful. And you can see the preview over here is updated. Okay, next I go to 3D model where I will insert the NSBMD. I'm already in the right folder, so I can just click this one. Successful. Okay, now we see my map here, which is great. And then I just need to bring in the terrain data which is the BDHC. And don't worry, this one doesn't actually change for that one. <laughs> so we're good. Now I do see in this preview that the buildings from the first map are still here. So this is the first part we'll clear out from the original map. I just go to the buildings tab and I can just use this delete button here to remove them. Nice and easy. Or if you want to learn how to insert your own buildings, check out episode three down the road to learn how to do that. Oh, and one more thing. I use tile set number six to draw this map, which matches this pick list over here. Since they already match, I don't have to change anything, but if your map uses a different tile set, be sure to update this as needed. And okay, once you're done, we'll just click the save this bin button. All right. And we are done with phase one. So on to phase two, where we'll now also clear off the events, scripts, and level scripts from the original map. Or unlike the original version of this video, this can all be done in one glorious tool. So to start, I'll go back to the header tab. Where I'm still on the twin leaf header here that I want to be on. And these can be cleared in any order. I just like to clear out the events first. So I'll click open events, which will jump me to the correct event file here. And you can see that the original mailboxes and uh, NPCs are still here on the map. So all we need to do is clear off these four tabs. So I'll go ahead and just use the delete button. And it seems to work better if you pick the bottom one and then delete. And the bottom one, uh, remove. Then triggers, delete. There we go. All right, so I can go ahead and save this. And now the events are clean. But there is one tip I'd like to give you here to help this run smoother. If I come back to the header after saving and open the events again, this window is now totally dark. Now it's not broken, it's just that this portion where it loads the map relies on finding one event to know where to load. So if it doesn't, it just sticks you at zero, zero, which is basically the very top corner up here where we need to go. But we need to be on this map down here, which is 3 and 27. So I have to come back here now on the event editor and change this to 3 and 27. If I click back on the X one, there we go, we're back on my map here. So to prevent this from happening, my advice is to take a spawnable and then edit, like so, and then save. So this one, you can put it anywhere, as long as it has the red border around it, you can just click around and move it. And uh, it's not gonna link to anything, so it's not actually going to do anything. So we can sit here and should allow you to now go back and make sure I saved. Okay, <laughs> double save to be sure. And then what events again, and now this prevents it from doing that black screen. Well, hopefully that should just save you a few headaches moving forward. Oh, and if you are curious how to work with this tab, like to place your own NPCs, make them talk, etc., you'll want to check out my big long video on scripting, where I show off how to use this tab as part of that video. So it should be a great thing to check out once you're done with all the mapping videos. But alright, anyway, 
So now that the events are all clean and saved, we want to jump back to the header editor again. And this time I'll go with scripts. Well, again, we're jumping to the right script file here. And all I want to do is clear out these three sub tabs. So just click, control A, delete. Click, control A, delete. Now I can't clear this first tab, this scripts tab. Because if I do that, like so, and try to save, it'll tell me that it can't be saved since it's empty. So I have to at least have one script in there. So I control Z, bring that back. I can copy everything but that top line and then just add end. So this is a empty script. And if I save it, now we're good. So now this is technically empty because it won't actually do anything. As it said, you can scroll up and down, oh, down, back to the exact number. And you can see this is updated, so there's only one script left here as well. And okay, that's already done. So we go back over here and we do one last clearing on the level scripts. And for this one, this is an extra thing I did not show in the original video. Where level scripts are different than normal scripts, where scripts are normally actions that are triggered by hitting A on something, Level scripts generally happen automatically, like when you walk through a door and an NPC immediately will talk to you. But as you can see here, DSPRE cannot currently edit level scripts, only normal scripts. So the only thing that we can do here is use this button to clear them, which is done there. And now for this one, you don't actually save that. If you do save it, you'll get this error here, which is totally fine. So you click OK, we've passed it. And this one here as well. So you just clear it, don't save it, that's, that's totally fine. Now later on, if you do want to try editing level scripts, Ad Astra does have a tool, as it says here, Ad Astra's Level Script Editor. And I provided a link to get this tool from the description of this video, just to help you get started with that. But all right, they're all clean now, and we should be good to go. Where now, if your map has something like a player that wants to talk to you, like at the very start of Platinum when your mom tries to talk to you at the bottom of the stairs when you first exit the player's room, often the ROM will crash there if you don't clear the level scripts. So in these videos, mostly at the end of episode four, you're going to see me use the player house to do something really cool. So look forward to that. But okay, with that, we are done with phase two. All the default data from the original map has been removed and my newly inserted map should now be clean and ready to build on. Now, before I move on to phase three, I now also want to import my second map as well so that they are connected. So I'm going to go through phase one and two again for that map. So like before, I need to locate the map I want to replace. So if I come back to the matrix editor, I just replace this map, because it's all in the map tab. And I want to replace the one to the north, which would be this one. So I just double click it. And here we are, Route 201. So this time, I'm going to show you how to much more easily import my second map using a bin file like you saw me generate in episode 1.5. So I just click this replace bin file here. And this time, since it was made in PDMS 2.2, I'll back up and go to my updated folder. And I want to use the version two of the Northern Pool I'll have a bin file inside. So I just click that and it literally replaces all of the tabs at once. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it is literally already done. This is because that bin file is just kind of like a zip file that just contains all the other map pieces. I thank Trafindo for adding this feature in PDSMS in the last video. And I greatly want to thank Nomura and Ad Astra for adding this feature on the DSPRE side, because them together has created such a wonderful thing that we can do now to make this so much easier. Oh, and so you can see that this map has water and grass on it, which is something that I didn't show how to draw on my first map example. So for your reference, I did include the PDSMS project file in this folder so you can open it on your end and see how it was made. So hopefully that helps you out. All right, so that's phase one. So now I just want to save my map. 
like so, which I don't actually think you need to do after replacing a bin, but I just feel safe doing it again. And now I need to find the header that I need. So I just kind of reverse what I did before, where now I know this map file here is on this square. So I go to the map header, and that's this square, and double click it, and then we come to the header, because DSPRE is amazing. And we can see here, Route 201. So it's just the same thing again. Open the event file. So just find anything on here. Go to the bottom. Remove. Warps none. Triggers there are some. Delete. And add one spawnable. Just to hold my place here for uh, later. All right. Save it like so. And then we will go to the header editor where we will go to open scripts. We're in the correct file here now. So we'll start here. Clear. Start here. Clear. And then come from the bottom all the way to the top. And I'll just type end. Okay, so I should be able to save. We're good. Okay, and then just one real quick open level scripts and clear. It says we don't save here, we're already done. Phase two. That is how fast this can go once you're familiar with this process. It's great. And okay, both my maps are inserted, so now we move to phase three, which is the part where I edit the ROM to spawn the player on my map after the intro. Those of you who have seen my original video on this part, with all the numbers and hex editing, are about to have your mind blown. DSPRE just has a feature to make this very easy to do called the Spawn Point Editor, which is right here, where it just has fields to fill out for it. it right now, you can see this is filled in with the information about the player's room for a Platinum ROM. So all I have to do is change this to the information that I need for my map. It's actually a pretty easy way to do that. So I'm actually gonna close this window here without changing anything. I'm gonna go back to the matrix editor and from either of these two tabs, I can click on the cell that I want and then just reopen the editor right here. Okay, so here it is again. And now you can see that it has information for Twin Leaf Town, including the 3 and 27 I had from before. So the only piece I have left to fill in is the local map X and map Y. So I'm going to save things as they currently are. I'm going to say yes to this window. Yes. Okay, looks good. Go ahead and close it. And a quick way to find those coordinates is just to go to the header for that. Be right here. And then go to the open events. And if you mouse over the preview, you can see in the lower left that it shows you the local coordinates right down there. And I want to place my player right here. But if you want a more visual example, what you can do is just go to the overworld and add a temporary one like so. And then while they're highlighted in red, just click to where you want them to be. And then you can see those same coordinates here instead. So it's 15, 17. Then I can just remove them or just not save either or. So, okay, I just come back up here and then I supply 15 and 17. Save one more time. Yes, we're still good. Okay. <laughs> and we're done. And you will really only understand my tone of this part if you've seen my original video. It's this is so much easier. <laughs> so this is all set. And you can also update the uh, player's money here if you wish. And also the direction they stand when they spawn. It's really good. So from there, I'm all done. So I can close this window and then save a whole new ROM. So I'm going to put that on my desktop, and I'm going to name it Platinum Maps Clean. And save. Did it show up? Right here. Okay, so I can just uh, minimize this one out of the way and open that ROM in Desmoomy to test it. So we'll open from the desktop, and we will open this one right there. Okay, it booted. Okay, always a good first sign. So 
So we'll go through. And uh, just so you guys know, I have limit frame rate off, so this goes a little faster. So, okay. Go through here. Yes, he says, hello. Yes, welcome, welcome. Hello. Would you see you? No info needed. Thank you, old man. Uh, now, okay. Let's remember, touch the ball. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Veneri, there you go, go through. This is yes, I will be a boy for this one, yes. And my name will be... Yay. Yes. Okay, this is yes, and my rival shall be Roy. Yes. Time has come, yes, yes. So we go right through the intro, or it'll still give us this little screen here. Hit A to go past it. And there we go. We're on my map and exactly where I wanted to go. And as I wanted, I'm facing up, which is great. So I can walk around. I can't walk through the trees. I can walk up and down my ladder, so it's good. Cool, cool. And I should be able to go north. Now, right here, actually, lines up with the original Twin Leaf Town, where th if I cross this line, I would trigger the rival's dad to stop me and then, you know, go maybe talk to Roy. So if I have properly cleaned the map, I can walk over this and they won't yell at me. And I can. Okay, looking good, looking good. So I can walk up in here. There's my next area. I can walk all the way around. Looks good. And go up this ladder up here. Yes, up along the outside. Yay. And I'm hoping I can walk all the way down here. And go across my bridge. Ooh, yes, yes. Looking good, looking good. Okay, very nice, very nice. So it worked, and it was so much easier than before. Now, okay, you can tell that if I come back over here and, you know, look over this part, my maps are not exactly blended with the rest of the world. So in the next video, episode 2.5, I'm going to show you how to move these maps around and raise them up so they better blend with my map as well. Where I'll put like a forest around it so it looks like I'm inside like the uh, deep woods. So be sure to check out that episode next. Oh, also, quick note. So like I said, I added grass to my map down here. And all on its own, this grass already links up to the encounter file that Route 201 uses. So if I walk around in here, I will meet those Pokemon. If you go over to my episode about wild Pokemon editing, you also have the power to edit the encounter file and pick what it'll show here. Ah, yes, yes, and one last thing. If you open the start menu, you'll see that I'm missing things like the Pokedex and the Pokemon party. So while I have a start of my own world here, I'm still missing pieces to be able to play inside that world. So I need to add scripts that will give me access to these missing pieces and also a starter Pokemon. Which is exactly what I cover in my scripting video where I place Rowan on my map and have him do just that. I know that video is my longest one by far, but I swear it's worth your time. But okay, okay, I should probably wrap things up from here. I think I have covered well enough for today. As I mentioned earlier, all the tools and maps that I use for this example are available in the downloadable tools folder that you can get from one of the two links in the description of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or come on by the Discord from the description as well. There are a lot of smart people in there to chat with. But alright, I'll catch you guys next in Mapping Episode 2.5. Good night everybody!